Hello and welcome to the third video on numerical methods using Mathematica. I uh, will be discussing the fixed point iterative method using Mathematica. Suppose you've been given a function f of x equals z. Um, firstly, I assume that the theoretical knowledge is in order and I won't really be discussing that. I'll just be covering the steps to implement the method on Mathematica. Right. So suppose that this is the function that we've been given. The first thing we want to do is equate that to 0 and make x the subject. So this is what I've done here. Um, and I hope you can see that you can get at least three different expressions when you make x the subject. All, you, all I did with the first expression is I substituted 0 for f and I took this term and this term to the other side of the equation then divided by 3 to get this. With this one, um, I took these two to the other side of the equation and took the inverse sign. And with the other one, well, it's pretty obvious which sign, um, which term was taken to the other side. Right, so once you've got your three expressions over there, you need to define a search interval. Now what that means is, right now, this function can go from negative infinity to positive infinity on the in terms of uh, the domain. So we need to limit ourselves to a certain interval that we're going to search the, um, the root in. So I've chosen 0 to 1 in this for this uh, video tutorial, but feel free to use whatever interval you've been given or whatever interval you feel like is sufficient for your function. Um, different functions will have different intervals. Right. Now, as the theorem states, x equals g of x. Here, where we've made x the subject of the formula, we take this function and we equate that to g of x, which is what I've done here. And we can do the same with these two expressions as well. Um, it's always, I always find it easier to start with the simplest expression. There's no, you don't really have to do all three of them if the first one does meet the requirements, and I'll tell you which requirements those are. Um, so this, to me, is the simplest expression. So I equated that to g. I just equated the, the other two for the purposes of illustration, but I'm pretty sure this will get the job done. Right. Now, how do we determine which function out of the three we use. Well, we've defined an interval and the theorem states that if we take this one and we substitute it for x in g, h, or l, the value of g, h, or l that we get has to be less than one. Right, even if this was a two for instance, the value of g, h, and l that we get would still have to be less than one. Then we would know that for that expression, there is a unique fixed point that lies within this interval. Let me show you this with an illustration. Suppose we're going to call this x1. And we call x1 g of 1. If g of 1 is less than 1, then this tells us that for that expression, there is a unique fixed point that lies in this interval which is what we're looking for. Now let's call, for the purposes of illustration only, let's call the other one i1 and we equate that to h at 1. That's also less than 1 and we can call the other one k1 and uh, we make that l at 1. That one's greater than 1. So this expression cannot be used we can choose between this one or this one. Well, for me, particularly if I do hand calculations, I'll pick this one because it's so much easier to work with. And the rest is just iterations. We've already gotten what x1 is. So the second iteration, which will be x2, will just be the g value at x1. And that's your second iteration. The third iteration, which is x3, will be the g value at x2. Hmm, this is starting to converge quite nicely. x4 will be the value of g at x3. And so on and so forth. 
still hopping around and x5 will be the value of g at x4 okay i think we're starting to converge x6 will then be g at x5 definitely starting to converge towards a specific point definitely so you can go, go on to whichever um, to however many iterations you want to go to and an easier way to find the roots of a function is to use the find root command but since we're only discussing iterations here i'm not gonna bother showing you that you can just look it up on mathematica or if you want to you can just plot the function um, using the plot command and the function we want to plot remember is not g it's actually f which is the function that we've defined here and those are the roots that we're trying to find so we can just plot the function here and specify the range in which we want to plot it in this case we said 0 to 1 and this is the root that we got after seven iterations which is very close to where the zero crossing is right um that concludes the section like and subscribe uh, if you've got questions post in the comment section and i will do my best to answer them and uh, i could use a beer actually so if y'all if any of y'all in cape town please buy me a beer thank you <laughs>